Look out, Uncle Buck is in town, and he's bringing his irresponsible comedy antics with him. In 1989, legendary comedian funny man John Candy starred as Uncle Buck, a hapless, directionless 40-year-old who likes to gamble and drink. However, Buck has to wise up his ways when he is left in charge to look after his brother's children after a family health crisis, where due to his fun-loving demeanor and kind and caring ways, Buck actually becomes a great role model to his nieces and nephew, with wacky comedy shenanigans along the way. Although Buck has his work cut out for him with Tia, his rebellious teenage niece who is determined to stand up to him and to make his life a misery. The question is, can Buck discover the cause of this teenage anger and resentment? See you in the car. So welcome to my 10 things that you didn't know about Uncle Buck video. Or as I knew it as a kid, that movie where John Candy tried to use one of those little mini toilets. With hilarious results. So, let's appreciate the funny antics of John Candy and check it out! I'm your Uncle Buck. Do I have an uncle? Number 10, multi-picture deal with Universal. John Hughes teamed up with Universal Pictures to make Uncle Buck, with him acting as the movie's writer, producer, and director. Uncle Buck was the first movie in which Hughes' company, Hughes Entertainment, was part of a multi-picture deal with Universal. Hughes had previously made movies under Universal Pictures like Weird Science and The Breakfast Club, but most of his movies were under the Paramount Pictures banner. Other Hughes-related movies that were distributed by Universal that followed Uncle Buck were Career Opportunities, which came out in 1991, and Beethoven in 1992. Interestingly though, if you look at the Hughes filmography, his catalogue of movies during the 90s didn't really go far with Universal Pictures, as most of the movies he worked on were distributed by Warner Brothers and 20th Century Fox. Number 9. Uncle Buck originally wasn't set in Chicago. From National Lampoon's Vacation to Ferris Bueller's Day Off to Home Alone, it seems that John Hughes has a love for the city of Chicago, with most of his movies being filmed there. In which, in some Hughes movies, Chicago is such a prominent part of the films, the city is almost like its own character. So it seemed natural that Uncle Buck would be set and filmed in Chicago too. Well, no, as Uncle Buck was to be set in St. Louis in Missouri, which would have been somewhat a departure in Hughes' movies. However, Uncle Buck is set during the winter, and thus the scenery was required to reflect that, and St. Louis just so happened to be experiencing warmer weather at that time, and thus it was felt that St. Louis wouldn't capture the cold, wintry scenery look required for the film. So it was off to the Windy City instead, where, as with most Hughes' movies, Uncle Buck was to be filmed in Chicago. Number 8. An Abandoned High School Takes Over For those who watched my episode on Home Alone, you'll remember I said that most of the interior of that movie was filmed at a high school, namely the New Tri High School in Illinois. Well, it was exactly the same for Uncle Buck one year earlier. The school was chosen as a way to keep set filming and location filming as close to each other as possible. The abandoned school had already been used to film several other Hughes movies, like Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Sixteen Candles. The school's gymnasium was used to build many of the sets used for Uncle Buck, including the Russell household. Other parts of the school were also converted to facilities to cater to the movie's production, such as a facility for editing, a special effects department, wardrobe, storage, and a projection booth. Heck, even little mini school classrooms were set up, so the younger actors wouldn't miss out on any school. It kind of makes you wonder just how many movies exactly have been filmed in abandoned schools and abandoned hospitals. Because in making this show, there seems to be a lot. Number 7. Danny DeVito didn't give a buck. John Candy totally owns the role of Uncle Buck. He has that sort of irresponsible man-child charm, but also brings a lot of likability to the part. So in essence, he makes Uncle Buck the great movie that it is. You ever hear of a tuna? <laughs> you ever hear of a ritual killing? <laughs> 
However, he wasn't the first choice for the role. The original choice for Uncle Buck was Danny DeVito, but regardless, DeVito left the project due to creative differences. And after Danny DeVito said buck off to the role, next in line was Tom Cruise. And that's no joke. He was actually considered for the role. Well, according to IMDB anyway, which let's be honest, isn't always the most reliable of sources, so it probably isn't true. But if it was true, he would have gone from the danger zone to the giant pancake zone. Other actors considered for the role were Robin Williams, which I can actually see, Chevy Chase, and Jack Nicholson, which I can't help but think would have been creepy. I mean, come on, The Shining, anyone? John Candy was subsequently chosen, who at that stage was something of a regular for John Hughes movies, having starred in National Lampoon's Vacation, Planes, Trains and Automobiles, and The Great Outdoors. In fact, Candy and Hughes got along so well, Candy would go on to have a brief role in Home Alone one year later, which he basically did as a favour. Have they met Twiddledink? His name is Bug. What's his last name, Spray? <laughs> Number six, John Candy using his head. Uncle Buck starred a nine-year-old Macaulay Culkin as Miles Russell, Buck's nephew whom is left in his care. Despite the fact that Culkin would make it big the following year with Home Alone, even in Uncle Buck you can see the young guy has a natural talent of comedic timing and dry wit, a lot of which would be used for his performance as Kevin McAllister. Holy smokes, he's cooking on garbage. In fact, a standout moment in the movie is when the Miles character interrogates Buck, with both Culkin and Candy responding to each other with funny, dry-faced, quick-paced timing. Where's your wife? Don't have one. How come? It's a long story. Do you have kids? No, I don't. How come? It's an even longer story. However, Culkin struggled with this scene, as he supposedly kept forgetting his lines, of which Candy wrote the lines down and stuck them to his head, in order for the young boy to see them. All I can say is I wish we could see the footage of Candy sitting down with a piece of paper stuck to his head. You have much more hair than your nose than my dad. How nice of you to notice. I'm a kid, that's my job. Number five, the gangster behind the clown. Just a few episodes ago, I spoke about Happy Gilmore and how therapeutic it was seeing the Gilmore character smash up the giant clown head, given that I have chlorophobia, aka a fear of clowns. Well, I'm starting to think that clowns getting beaten up by funny leads in movies is going to need to be its own segment in this show, as the same thing happens in Uncle Buck when a clown turns up for Miles' birthday party, complete with a mouse car where Buck can detect the clown has been drinking, of which Buck tells the clown to leave, and a fight ensues, and Buck knocks the birthday clown out. Get in your mouse, and get out of here. Hey you, let me tell you something, low life lion, four flush and sack of shit. <laughs> Look at his squash clown nose. <laughs> The clown was actually played by Mike Starr, who often played tough guy gangsters in movies such as Goodfellas and Mad Dog and Glory, as well as appearing as one of the heads of security in The Bodyguard, and as a more comical brute in Dumb and Dumber. However, under all that clown makeup in Uncle Buck, you would never recognize him. <laughs> Number four, one scene led to the creation of Home Alone. So going back to Macaulay Culkin, Uncle Buck is definitely a precursor of Home Alone, not only thanks to the young star, but how the movie is made. One memorable scene in particular involved the Miles character interrogating Buck's girlfriend, Shanice, through the mail slot on the door. The scene also features Miles getting scared and imagining that there are house burglars on the other side of the door slot. This scene is what prompted John Hughes to go and write Home Alone, as it features a child who is acting as the head of the house while also being at the mercy of potential bad guys. Heck, Home Alone even featured a near identical scene, only it's not a mail slot, but a cat flap. Which is weird, as I don't actually remember the McAllisters having a cat or a dog. Interestingly, the PlayStation 2 game of Home Alone featured Kevin peering through a mail slot on the door, which looks near identical to the shot from Uncle Buck. Hmm, could they have gotten the two movies confused? In fact, I think people get those scenes from Uncle Buck and Home Alone confused and mixed up. Because after I made my Home Alone video, a lot of people left comments and messages telling me that the Wet Bandits had a cameo in Uncle Buck when Miles looks through the mail slot. But no, they were just plain burglars. And there was actually three of them. That and Home Alone hadn't been invented yet. Number three, John Candy behind the camera. 
There are loads of behind the scenes stories as to how warm and kind John Candy was behind the scenes while making Uncle Buck. Amy Madigan, who played Buck's girlfriend Shanice, gave the Canadian actor great praise, saying that he treated everyone with respect and kindness. Buck melanoma, Molly Russell's ward. The actress who played Tia, Jean Louisa Kelly, said that Candy got her a birthday cake for her birthday, with She Was Just 17 written on the cake in icing, which is a reference to the Beatles song I Saw Her Standing There. However, some of the behind the scenes stories of Candy were also slightly mischievous, as apparently one night during filming, Candy headed out to a local bar and probably had too much fun as the next day, a less than impressed John Hughes heard about Candy's antics the previous night on the local radio news. But that's all supposedly, so <laughs> who knows? John Candy was not only funny, but he did have a great generosity about him. He seemed kind and caring and relatable, and I can still remember being really sad when I was a kid and learned of his passing. Speaking of the child actors from Uncle Buck, this is what they look like now. Macaulay Culkin is 39 years old and has his Bunny Ears company taking place, as well as still being an actor and even appearing in several web shows, like The Angry Video Game Nerd and Red Letter Media. Come to Australia, Culkin. You know, just saying. It'll be awesome doing an episode with you. Gabby Hoffman played Maisie Russell and is now 38 and through her career has done a lot of theatre work and appearing in TV shows. And the as mentioned Jean Louisa Kelly is now 47 and has also had an extensive career in TV, starring in the CBS sitcom Yes Dear and is set to star in Top Gun Maverick. Number two, spin-offs. After Uncle Buck came out, there was no sequel. There was, however, a TV sitcom based on the movie, which always confused me as a kid, as in the end of the movie, the parents came home and everything was wrapped up. I also couldn't figure out why Buck kind of looked like John Candy, but wasn't quite John Candy. The series was shown on CBS in 1990 and 1991. However, it only lasted for one season, consisting of 22 episodes, six of them being unaired. The premise of the show is actually surprisingly dark, giving its more goofy comedic nature, with Buck now being the Russell children's legal guardian after their parents are killed in a car accident. Yikes! Like, wasn't there any other way to bring Buck back other than the parents are dead? The show was cancelled after poor reviews and not being able to compete with Full House, leaving it a strange pop cultural anomaly. Also in 1991, an Indian musical remake came out called Uncle Bun, which follows the same story, only there are now musical numbers. I haven't seen the movie, but damn, I really want to. And I love how the Uncle Buck character, who is now called Charlie, has a cowboy hat. Then in 2016, there was another series based on Uncle Buck, which I also haven't seen, so I can't really pass any comment. I don't even think it was shown here in Australia. And just like the previous series, it was panned by critics and only lasted one season. Number one, cinematic beatdown. The movie's poster sent a clear and prominent message. Look out, Uncle Buck is in town. Bolt your doors. Although I don't know why the poster is making him look like a menace, he was actually a pretty nice guy. Uncle Buck came out in August 1989 and opened up at the number one spot and made over $79 million on a $15 million budget, making it a success. Despite going on to become a beloved family comedy classic, critics were initially unsure of Uncle Buck, with the movie getting mixed reactions, with it being described as having its ups and downs. Uncle Buck would go on to be the 18th highest grossing movie of 1989, which is actually fairly impressive, as 1989 was a big year for movies, especially franchise movies with the likes of Ghostbusters 2, Back to the Future 2, Lethal Weapon 2, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and the impossibly popular Batman movie. So Uncle Buck did pretty good, all things considering. But regardless, thanks to Uncle Buck, we'll never forget that time that John Candy drove into town to look after some kids and made everyone's life a bit brighter and happier. You should see that toast. I couldn't even get it through the door. <laughs> Uncle Buck is just one of those films that gives you a warm, happy glow. Basically, it's a feel-good movie. And it was at a time when John Candy was at the top of his game. And despite the fact that he's playing an irresponsible man who drinks and smokes too much, he still has plenty of warmth, and it's that warmth alone that makes Uncle Buck so magical. 
Anyway, I'm Minty, and rest in peace to John Candy and John Hughes. See ya!